interpretation of the Jordan rules are this. There are three areas on the floor the Pistons need to be concerned about. He's sensational when he dribbles to his right. He's only great when he goes left. They will force him left as much as possible from the top of the circle area. I was covering the team at the time. My eyes were telling me, some Jordan rules going on here. So let me go write a story about this. And I would always get this. What are you talking about? There's no Jordan rules. We're just playing tough, physical, like anybody else. When Michael Jordan has the ball on the foul line extended or wing area, he is so good, too good at going baseline, coming back up under the basket, getting fouls on the big people. So instead, the Pistons will force him to come to the middle of the floor off the dribble, trying to get help from the next defender. You say, what, what about the Jordan rules? And they say, what Jordan rules? And they'd say, what, well, what about this defense you're playing on? We're not playing anything special. And they all laughed and they'd wink and then they'd move on. They also need to be concerned about pick and rolls. They'll trap everyone. And while Michael's doing his thing, just kind of creating, they'll run the next guy at him to double team him, no matter who it is. But keep this in mind, Mark, they don't always use the Jordan rules. Oh, they didn't preach it. They didn't brag about it. But it was on display. Jordan to the foul line, room in the lane. Isaiah grabs him and fouls him. The Jordan rules were for the Pistons know about, not for anybody else to know about. The Jordan rules, is that something you guys made up? Jordan rules were, you know, to stop him, period, because nobody else could beat you on that ball club. They have been called a dirty ball club, and I can see why. I don't know. Uh, you have to ask my man Matt Dobick on that one if it was any Jordan rules, and him and Chuck Daly not around, so I don't think it was any Jordan rules. Isolation play for Jordan, and Isaiah Thomas ties it up. How high can this man fly? Michael Jordan is soaring and the Chicago Bulls are going right with him. Jordan is averaging 38 points a game in the first two playoff rounds. But now, Superman faces his toughest test. Game one will tell if Detroit's road has been too easy, while the Bulls come off the biggest win in the history of their franchise. You know, the whole Pistons-Jordan rules thing was frustrating as a beat writer because I was covering the team at the time. And I would always get this. What are you talking about? There's no Jordan rules. We're just playing tough, physical, like anybody else. So I'm like, all right, cool. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome. I'm Brad Musburger along with Bill Raftery. Let's get right to it. The man was the next coach. How do you stop Michael Jordan? Uh, there's not much you can do with him. You have to make him go east to west in the fast break. He's good on the perimeter, but he's great when he penetrates. At certain times, teams found themselves watching and in awe of him and maybe uh, bashful about you know, being physical with him. I was in the Detroit Pistons locker room before the game, and it's very obvious they would like to wind this thing up tonight. And while I was down there, Chuck Daly unveiled his final instructions for the players, and I wrote them down for you. Chuck Daly devised it and his coaches, and uh, it probably is one of the great things that made Chuck Daly the great coach that he was in everyone's eyes. Seventh game intensity, he said. Let's play like this is the seventh game. Control the boards, energy, nothing new for the bad boys. He says, intimidate and dominate. And then on the bottom, in big capital letters, it says, follow the Jordan rules. And I said, what are the Jordan rules? And they said simply, when he goes to the bathroom, we all go with him. <laughs> Let's go back to that. There were no secrets. I mean, everybody knew what the rules were, and that was to put him on the floor when he came to the basket and try to keep him from the crowd-pleasing, uh, uh, you know, super fantastic flamboyant plays that he was capable of making. Michael Jordan, who has done miracle things on the court, trying to carry his team on his shoulders against a great defensive team, maybe one of the greatest defensive teams in recent years in the NBA. Jordan has had his marvelous moments, but lately he has been stymied by the Detroit Pistons. They had figured out how to contain Michael Jordan. They had finally figured out, to some degree, how to contain Michael Jordan. There is Michael Jordan. And Bill Cartwright, the Pistons are in blue, the Bulls are in white. Chicago's ball with John Paxson still showing effects of that sprained ankle. Let's see the movement now. They try to go down inside to get either Grant or Pittman off early. Here's Grant. Blake Beer made him change his shot. Here comes Isaiah Thomas chugging up court. 
So what you had to do is you really had to look at the games. And the Jordan rules were pretty simple. And there was a couple versions of them. But one, Joe Dumars would guard Michael Jordan. And, uh, and he would um, sometimes be doubled by Dennis Rodman. Or Joe Dumars would try to you know, funnel him left into John Sally or to James Edwards or whatever big guy was there. And the idea, the concept was to get Jordan to pass out or to take difficult shots. Jordan, good pick from Pippen on the pick and roll. And then a good defensive effort from James Edwards. Chased down by Rodman. Down low, Jordan coming around a screen. Gets him into the paint, Lambeer to help out. And great Detroit defense. Michael Jordan. Jordan, short with a shot. Get back. The second part of the uh, Jordan rules is that, you know, you send Joe Dumar somewhere else, all of a sudden, you got six foot seven, six foot eight Dennis Rodman on you. And Dennis Rodman was a physical player. And he would be hitting Jordan, hitting him, moving his feet. And Jordan didn't like that. Do it again. And your call, Rodman now on Michael Jordan. And he steps right inside him. Missed the first shot against Rodman. Michael Jordan as the point guard, you can't help out as much with traps. That's the problem. Oh, coming inside, offensive foul is the call. So you had Joe Dumars, who probably you know, was, was more compact and just stand in your face and guarding you and funneling you somewhere. And now you have Dennis Rodman, who's trying to get inside of your head, tapping you, being physical, throwing, throwing that elbow. So he got two different looks. And so when Jordan got accustomed to Rodman, here comes Joe again, and now you have the other Jordan rules where you're kind of funneling him into traffic. So Detroit Pistons have so many things to think about. I made a list for you. Defense, rebounds, Jordan, 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 Jordan. Another part of the Jordan rules was very, very simple. Get the ball to whoever Michael was guarding. Make him work on the other end. If he had to guard Joe, get shots for Joe. If he had to guard Isaiah, God help him. Two seconds, one second, Isaiah at the bucket. The other thing about the Jordan rules is you had to be physical with him. If Jordan got loose, he was going to get hit, and he knew it. Jordan left wing. Jordan to the foul line, room in the lane. Isaiah grabs him and fouls him. The only way you were going to slow him down or get him to think about what he was doing, you know, coming inside and, and, and jumping in the air was to at least give him the the, the thought that he could get hurt. The thing about Jordan which made him great is he was able to take the pain, take the physical play, and still play his game. But it was a lot easier for Jordan to do this against other teams than it was for the Pistons. Because other teams said, well, we're going to do the Jordan rules too. But they didn't have the defensive players to pull it off like the Pistons did. And so the Pistons in that way were able to at least get in his mind and cause him to to think about, oh boy, where's Lambeer? You know, where's 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 Mahorn? You know, where, where's Edwards? You know, where's Rodman? He could get hurt, he could get bumped, he could get knocked down at any time. Good afternoon again, everyone. I'm Dick Stockton. We've had a day to think about this, and so is Chuck Daly. After Michael Jordan's 47 points, he decided he was going to go to the team, ask them, how should we defend Michael Jordan? The word is there was silence for a while, but then they came up with an idea. And the question as I asked Hubie Brown is, how do you anticipate the Pistons playing the great Michael today? Game seven from the Palace. Piston ball. Wires five of six. Back to Dumars. Jordan, good pick from Kippen on the pick and roll. And then a good defensive effort from James Edwards. I mean, he's going to score on you no matter what kind of defense you put on him because that's the kind of player he was. We just wanted to slow him down and try to double team him a lot and make other people beat us opposed to letting Michael Jordan beat us. And the Bulls wanted to get the ball to Jordan on the post. He was forced to come outside and get it. Kicked out. And time has been called. He would not pass the ball on time. He would exhaust every option in order to score himself first. Uh, we knew that going in, so just shut him down and you got the game won. Jordan comes to the baseline. Dumars stays with him. Now Jordan into the lane, can't get the roll. Dumars out. Here's Thomas. Paxson back. Thomas into him. Off the glass. You, you play teams because if they got a superstar, if you can negate them, 
and let somebody else beat you, that would be great. If we felt that Bill Cartwright needed to score 40, then Bill Cartwright can score 40. Cartwright, no call. Blocked by Isaiah Thomas. Here's Dumars. He wouldn't give up. That's what I would say about Michael Jordan. He would not give up. Isolation play for Jordan. And Isaiah Thomas ties him up. Defensively, the Pistons are now pointing totally at Michael Jordan. They don't believe that any of the other four Bulls can hurt them at this point with this much time left. If they didn't have the mental part or that, you know, we're too bullish to believe it's the end, they would have lost that series. They would have lost the game at the Palace. But they were just real bullheaded and stubborn and uh, resolute about things. And that's why they won that series, despite I thought Jordan had an excellent series. Uh, then also. On the ball. No. <laughs> There's right the answer. Now, and we'll see here. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Lambeer out. Thomas out. Well, the Pistons have moved on, but you really got a feel for this man right here. And well, Phil Jackson said yes. This will be considered a successful season for the Bulls. They went one game farther. For the Pistons, nothing but another world championship will do. And they, the Detroit Pistons, will meet the Portland Trail Blazers in the best of seven beginning Tuesday night on CBS. Those years that we beat those guys, I mean, he took a lot of abuse from us. Didn't matter if it was Michael Jordan or if it was uh, Craig Elo, I'd hit them all. It don't matter because you're the opposition. You're not. You're not my teammate. I mean, that was. They were our rules, and that's the rules the Detroit Pistons went by. How we're going to play Michael Jordan, and uh, you know, we kind of played it up a little bit, but that's that's just the way it was back then. Until he learned how to involve his other players, uh, he couldn't win, especially against us. Once he started learning that and gave up some uh, control over his ball club to a degree, that's when they started winning. And we got old, that was part of it, but still you gotta give him credit for recognizing that he couldn't do it himself. When Jordan hit that big shot over Dennis Rodman, um, you kind of started thinking, okay, maybe this is the end. And then he finally figured out you know, he had to get a lot stronger, get his teammates more involved to beat us. And, you know, by that fourth year, we played them again, and, you know, they finally figured out how to beat us. They swept us. I don't know why it didn't hold. I think guys just got older, they had different players in. It wasn't quite the group that really held him down before. Every team has their little window of opportunity. Um, we had ours, could we have won that ne next year? Tough, they had the home court advantage, uh, and we were getting older, there's no question about that. Uh, and you lose a little bit of mental, mental edge at that point. You know, they, they were hungrier than we were, and uh, Jordan was changing his game, involving his teammates a little bit more. Pippen was growing up, um, it became their time. The league uh, decided that they wanted to uh, clean up the game, get rid of some of the physical contact, uh, clear out the lanes so that the, uh, the great players, the great athletes could drive to the basket. That was geared more to help Michael Jordan and the Bulls, and it was certainly the kind of legislation that did not help the Detroit Pistons. Maybe because of the way he was treated in the league, but he's carrying, you know, it, it's about who would you come see? Would you come see Rick Mahorn or would you come see Michael Jordan? He can fill the seats up. So those were the rules. There weren't there were no secret about the rules. I mean, it was very obvious and very vivid for everybody who was watching. It was just that the Pistons were one of the teams that were willing to do it, where others may have backed away from it. Jordan is fouled, going strong to the hoop and pays for it. 
Foul was on Edwards. That's four on James Edwards. And there's Mark Aguirre. Played his college basketball at DePaul. 